For those of you that aren't familiar with our series, Containment Breach is our anthology series. Here's volume one and volume two. Each book has its own unique theme. Our very first one, which we did like a zine, was uh, Quarantine Chronicles for, for reasons that you could never, ever possibly guess. No one in the world could guess. And volume two was Myth Reborn. And uh, we were so proud of the incredible stories we had in those volumes. We wanted to keep it going. My goal, our goal, is to never put out one of those anthologies that you pick up and it's got like three great stories, four pretty good stories, and then a bunch of, and I can tell you now with four volumes in the can, I proudly can say we have not done that because we will not do that. And it's easy not to do as it turns out because there is so much incredible talent out in the indie comic world and so many fun people to play with. And I'd like to introduce Andres Briano right now, writer, extraordinaire. Uh, Andre, how are you doing? Hey, Kristen. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. How, how are things? Good. Things are, are going well. It's a bit exciting. Um, I know you're a big movie guy, so I wore my, uh, my outfit. Look at that. that I good? love that fat guy. I, I entire, absolutely adore it's all images from his movies. This yeah, thing yeah, is yeah. surprising. Isn't that cool? I, I, I wore it specifically Norma for you. Bates, the, yeah. the, the, that, that's all I can see from here, yeah. You got some North but, by Northwest going on, right? Ah, there you go, yeah. There. yeah. So, uh, so uh, Andre, uh, who are you? Tell us. So, uh, I am a guy who, who went to film school that wanted to make films for a living a long time ago. And um, after flirting with that for a decade or so, um, I came to the realization that um, comics was the place where I wanted to be in simply because of the reason that um, since artists, they charge you at a page rate and they don't care what they need to draw, that that was, that would completely unleash my creativity and, and the budget of whatever production I wanted to work on would not limit the story that I wanted to tell. So that was who I am, right? Someone that started in film and, and then uh, moved over to comics to write comics, but I've been reading them since I can remember. Um, where, where did you start? What, I, what's your, what's your comic point, starting off point? My, my first comic was a detective comic that I bought back in 1991 at the sweet age of 15 in a supermarket. Um, I was in the States on holidays and I was in the supermarket doing grocery shopping. And by the cashier, I saw, I think it was Detective Comics 600, no, 465, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Uh, um, yeah, and uh, yeah. And that was it. <laughs> that was that was all down downhill from there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, are you still a Batman fan? Yeah, I, I, I've, I'm a much more eclectic reader nowadays. Um, I am currently living in Europe, in France, and I sort of split my time between DC and Marvel on one side, but I'm I'm also have a couple of authors that I adore from here from France, and I read a lot of uh, yeah BD, which is how they call uh, comics over here, right? Who should we uh, be reading? Give us get give us the end. So um, basically, it's, it's a very different market over here that they publish like self conclusive stories in album shape. They're bigger and they are hard covers, and they are roughly 60, 70, 80 pages each. And it's like Tintin or or Asterix that can kind of, that, that kind of market. And uh, one of the there's this guy here is called Xavier Dorison that I absolutely adore. He's a writer as well. He's responsible for a lot of things. But Undertaker is one of the things that I think that better reflects uh, what he does. Uh, it's a western and it's fantastic. So do check that out if you have a chance. I have already looked it up here, and the art looks beautiful. And Ralph Meyer is the, the artist. And um, yeah, he's very, very, very good, very talented. Yeah. My, uh, I have family. Uh, my mother's whole side of the family is in Italy. And her brother, my, my Zio Glauco, he, uh, he was a comic collector. And uh, I remember wow. going to Italy at like 14, 13 years old. And I was staying in, in, on a cot in his bedroom. And he was older and, you know, he was out most of the time. But I found his Diabolic cartoon comics. Uh, uh, Dylan Dog and uh, Tex 
And that was my introduction to the more European style of comic. And it's so funny because it's what, if you think about what Image does, yeah. Uh, and a lot of these other companies, they, they adopted that. As America has begun to adopt the European television model, you know, smaller seasons, only yeah. a couple of series, right? Doesn't go on for, for the rest of your life, the show, <laughs> beginning, middle, and an end. Uh, that's like when I discovered Black Science from Image, yeah. I was thinking very much of the European comics, and that's what I wanted. I'm like, this is, I want a beginning, middle, and an end. And what you said earlier to tie it together, no fear of budget. I can blow up a planet uh, yeah. for, for page rate, right? <laughs> for, for a page rate, right? So if I draw a conversation in a restaurant or if I draw a, an alien invasion of a planet, the page rate is the same. And that realization blew my my mind. And said, yeah. Yeah, that's what I need to do. And I started writing back in, I want to say, 2015, I think. And I've been writing ever since, right? I, I've, I've done a lot of short stories in different anthologies like yours like containment breach um and yeah that that's what i've been doing so tell, tell me what you did for containment breach so i wrote a story based on a premise that i was given am i allowed to say the premise of the story yeah, absolutely all right so let me quickly say not only when when someone's accepted the containment breach they're given the umbrella theme of the book right so volume two right. for example was myth reborn and you can go to fugitive poems com, fugitive poems .com right now and order it and volume one and so they had to write a story that somehow had something to do with mythology anywhere in the world any kind it could be classic it could be urban it could be whatever uh but what we also like to do and this is my my something i'm incredibly proud of uh is once all the teams have been put together Every team has to come up with a random prompt. It could be any a couple of words, uh, uh, terrible twos, uh, tarot cards. Uh, yep. uh, 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 could be uh, that shoe I lost last summer. And they send that to me. We mix them around and send them back to all the teams, randomized. And so when you get your acceptance, you have been accepted to write, in this case, a story that falls under the theme of Of Stars and Ether for volume four. Yep. And somehow includes in well, some way. Sorry, to correct you, of clouds, isn't it? Clouds and ether. What did I say? Stars. Stars that, and ether. I, I I, th that proves how little I've said it. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it didn't sound right. This is much better. We're going to go with yours. Sorry to correct oh. you, but your own book is of clouds and ether. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get my kids' names right, so you know, <laughs> of clouds. That's much better. Of clouds and ether, and um then they have to somehow include in some way, shape, or form. That's hysterical. When I said it before, it sounded wrong. Uh, the prompt that they were given. So if they sent out terrible twos and they get back that chew I lost last summer, they have to somehow include that that chew I lost. Not the sentence, that some way to bring it in. And this has gotten us such incredible, exciting, creative things that no one would have thought of before because these elements have been handed to them and they can do anything they want with it. So go ahead, Andres. So, yeah, so basically... Let me take one step back. Uh, the, the initial thing about this experience in this anthology with my story was that unlike all other anthologies where you basically submit a script and, and it gets chosen on the merits of the script, you guys chose the people, the, the creators that were going to be in the story based on what they'd done before. So I wrote nothing and I, I, I signed up without knowing what the book was going to be about what my collaborators are going to be and what the story was going to be about. So that, that was very unusual and it was very, very exciting. That was one. The other one then you told me of Clouds and Ether, which sparked a bunch of ideas in my head. And then you gave me the prompt, which was Musica Universalis, right? Which <laughs> it took a lot of work to try to work it into a story that made sense. You were kind enough not to force us to make that a big part of the story because it was not easy. And if you research music and universalis, you'll see that it's a very, it's a very old mathematical approach to yeah. uh, planets and rotations and and notes that those planets would make. It's very 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 complex. So um, yeah, so I the, the, when I was accepted, I was introduced to this artist I was going to be working with, and I was giving a prompt, and I said, "Do something with that." And I said, "What?" <laughs> Am I supposed to? It was it was it was fantastic. It was liberating, and it was also nerve wracking, right? And and, in, and I conferred with the artist a lot, and we came up with a story that 
we are very proud of that we think is looking fantastic oh and my that gosh. we do hope that you guys enjoy mm -hmm. I, it came out so well use art is beautiful and unique it is so it, it's got it's funny because it has a european or non-american flavor to it yeah. and i love that and the colors are vivid yeah. the the characters are fascinating yeah. the way that they're designed um and and then uh tom line stepped in with the lettering That's right, yeah. and the, the three of you together put together a beautiful story yeah. so here's here's what you didn't even know you were up against musica universalis is one of my favorite philosophical theories I've written, a, I wrote a poem about it. It's something I think about all the time, the implications of it and all, I, I'm fascinated by it. And um, it was almost going to be the name of the entire book, but I didn't want everyone to think about one thing. Um, I but, hope we did you proud then with the story then. And I could not be more yeah. disappointed. No, it was, <laughs> it's beautiful. I love this story. It's one of the ones. So right now we're wrapping everything up back in the past. We're racking, wrapping everything up and I keep going back to it. And every time I open it or go to do something with it, I get lost in it again. And I, and I thank you for that. Um, I, I really appreciate it, Andres. You guys all did an excellent job. Uh, I actually talked to Tom last night and uh, Tom Linet, and he he's had so much fun where he's, he's done stuff. He did stuff in the lettering there that he's never done before, playing around with color matching as well yep. and all that. Yep, 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 really yep. terrific. Uh, so that that's, uh, th was it, it was a good, it was a good experience for you, I hope. It was a fantastic experience. Um, it, it was, it was such the opposite of all my previous experiences. And it, it's always great, right? So, because if, if you think about it, comic, creating comic stories is about collaborating, right? So that story is bigger than myself or the artist or the letter, you and, and Tom. It's, 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 it's a product of a collaboration. And this was a very unusual collaboration for me. And, and yeah, it's always a learning experience. And it was one that I had fun with. Yeah, I would definitely do this again with those guys in without a second thought. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love it. Well, I am incredibly glad to hear that. Uh, we, we loved having you on it. And then I have a really important question to ask you. This is the most important thing I'm going to ask you. Forgetting time of day, and we're in different time zones, and we're all confused about it anyway. Forgetting time of day, forgetting all social anythings. If any single beverage could appear in your hand right now, yes, what would it be? A gin and tonic. A gin, what kind of gin? Um, hmm. There is one here that it's made out of. How do you say that? Um, it's not Edelweiss. It's a strange aromatic herb from here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking the name. Oh, you got so it. It's called Shotgun Gin. It's a, it's a French brand. Um, oh. it's, it's not, it's Elden Flower. That's what it is. Elden Flower Gin. That's perfection when it comes to a drink, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. That's what I would have. Yeah. That's, I love it. That's an excellent answer. I, excellent. I love, I love gin and tonic and I, I love gin. Um, well, and one day I'll tell you why I can't, I, I can't drink it anymore. And it's not a crazy drunk story. It's what? a sad, sad aging allergy. I developed Ooh, that's, allergy. That sucks. man. Yeah. So I told my wife, I said, if that then happens with the whiskey, you realize I'm going to have to end my life. Um, <laughs> I have to heal <laughs> myself. That's it. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's nothing left for me. <laughs> I, I do have things. That, there are things that if they were prohibited for me, uh, uh, I would probably kill myself. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think we all have that list. <laughs> If you take that away from my diet, I'll kill myself, right? And I'm not exaggerating. A exactly. Absolutely. Anyway, Meatballs are up there. I feel for you. Yeah. <laughs> but Andres, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to go to fugitivepoems.com. Click on, click on the link to get to uh, the Kickstarter. You can order volume one of uh, Containment Breach, volume two of Containment Breach, and volume three of Containment Breach from FugitivePoems.com. It's also in comic shops across the country, across the United States. Uh, we don't have any in France yet, but we're working on that. We will uh, work on that. I'll help and you, you out. Go, to, go to Kickstarter, and you can go to Containment Breach, Fugitive Poems, and get on of Clouds and Ether, which is much better than of Stars and Ether. Uh, and... Um, Go to Twitter and Instagram at Fugitive Poems. Uh, Andre, where are we going to see you? Where do we go to see your work? So um, Twitter is, I'm in between websites myself. So Twitter is going to be the best place to find me. Um, at 
Briandriu, and I'm going to spell that for you guys. It's B-R-I-A-N-D-R-E-U. That's where you can find me. Uh, and yeah, uh, you'll see all of my past work in there. And I'm about, I'm finishing a, my first graphic novel right now with an, another artist. And that's allegedly going to come out some point next year. So that's where you'll have to find some, some news about that by the time. Some point this year. It's coming out later, hopefully by the end of the year. Hopefully. 2023, you know, right? Right, okay. Yeah. Well, because we're yeah. in the future right now. We're all oh, <laughs> sorry, apologies. Absolutely. So we're gonna rewind. So you should check out my graphic novel that came out at the end of last year. <laughs> and he is also not in between websites because he is got not. His so you can go to dot com and there you'll find all my work. <laughs> now we're in the future. Excellent. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, fugitivepoems.com. Check us out, get on Kickstarter, order the book. This anthology series has been a smash hit throughout. This book is no different and uh, you're gonna love it. We are Fugitive Poems and we make comics. <laughs>